Hello and thank you for downloading Witness from the BBC World Service. Today we go back to August 1964 when a young Scottish anarchist was arrested in Madrid for his part in a plot to assassinate the Spanish dictator, Generalissimo Franco. Mike Lanchon has been hearing his story. This programme was first broadcast in August 2012. It's August 1964 and 18-year-old Stuart Christie has just arrived in the Spanish capital with a rucksack full of explosives. He's heading for the offices of American Express, where he'll pick up instructions about what to do next in a complicated plot to end almost three decades of Franco's rule. I arrived in Madrid, went for a coffee in the Puerto del Sol, which is directly opposite security headquarters. Then I walked down to the offices of American Express to collect final instructions. But something was not quite right. As I walked through the door, there were these four or five guys with sunglasses standing outside the uh, offices of the American Express. And I remember registering, be careful. In spite of his suspicions, the young Scott decided to continue with the plan. And he went inside the offices to pick up the letter he'd been told would be waiting for him there. It was a bad move. So I um, went into the offices and presented my passport to the girl behind the counter. And as she was taking the passport, she was stopped by her superior. They collected the letter they were waiting for me and it had a pink slip around it. And at that point I knew immediately that I'd walked into a trap. Now certain that things were going wrong, Christie turned and headed back out onto the capital's hot and busy streets. I got to the top of the, the street that was where I was planning to make a, make a run for it. And then suddenly just I was up against the wall, gun in my back and uh, handcuffs on me. I said, yeah, I'm a, I'm a British citizen, I'm a British you know, tourist. He said, uh, you're a terrorist and uh, you're coming with us. And what was going through your mind then? Yeah, I mean, actually my mouth went dry. All the saliva just completely disappeared. It, it was like a, inside of a parrot's cage. It was the end of a journey that had begun for Stuart Christie months earlier, among fellow radicals back in London. A lot of uh, light-heartedness and, uh, you know, as you would expect with uh, with youngsters because, you know, we were mainly between 16 and 21, 22. And they were all keeping a close eye on events back in Spain where the regime was responding to increased unrest with repression. Among industrial workers, with their average income of less than £2 a week, discontent has increased. Perhaps it's here that Franco senses danger. Although, as long as the well-disciplined army is loyal to its Cordillo, there seems little reason for him to worry about political agitation. The habit of public protest has been dormant for too long, and it can be dangerous to judge from the number of political prisoners in Spain today. But Christie was keen to move from talk to action, and he jumped at the first chance to help. I was uh, asked to come over to the house of one of the, um, the members of the Juventus Libertarius and uh, we went into a back room and they said, well, something's come up and would you prepare to go uh, by the end of the month? Did you ask what that is? No, but they did say that it'd be a courier job, you know, taking stuff in, didn't say what, but uh, I mean, I more or less assumed that it would be either be uh, weapons or explosives. And do you remember what you felt at that stage? Well, I just felt quite uh, elated that uh, something was uh, was kicking off, you know, as opposed to me, you know, sort of hanging around kicking my heels. Telling his other friends he was going grape-picking for the summer in the south of France, he left London for Paris. 
There he met a contact who gave him several packages of explosives and told him to hand them over to another contact when he reached the Spanish capital. When I met him, I was supposed to have a handkerchief in my hand or a bandage. And he would say to me, um, Kital, what happened to your hand? Le, le dwelly. And uh, I had to say, no me dwelly. No me dwelly, it doesn't hurt me. Doesn't hurt. And uh, if he spoke to me again, I said, you soy Aliman. I'm German. I'm German. And uh, pass over the packages and uh, then return to France. But before he crossed into Spain, Christie thought it best to take the explosives out of his rucksack and hide them. So he taped them to his body and put on, over the top, a thick woollen sweater that his grandmother had knitted for him. In the high summer temperatures, that was definitely a mistake, especially when the car he hitched a lift in across the border broke down repeatedly. So the sweat was uh, was pouring off me, and of course with this car keeping breaking down, and I had to get out and push, and of course there's policemen standing there, and uh, this bloody plastic explosive from the sweat, the, the, the elastoplast came undone, and I could feel it slipping down, so I'm trying to support this stuff under my jumper, and I had visions of this plastic explosive dropping at the feet of the traffic policemen and all being discovered. In the end, it wasn't the explosives hidden under his jumper or his lack of experience that gave him away. It was clear from the moment that Christie was arrested in Madrid that Franco's secret police had infiltrated the exiles both in Paris and in London and were well aware of the plot. We drove to security headquarters, drove inside and taken upstairs into the secret police headquarters offices, which is a big open plan area, and they were sort of surrounded by all sorts of you know, guys who were quite curious to see who I was and what I was. And uh, then they began questioning me. You know, and they set, First of all, they searched the bag. Uh, said, what are you looking for? And I couldn't find anything until they unrolled the sleeping bag and then they found the explosive. So they knew, they knew exactly what they were looking for. I tried to look as surprised as possible, but it was a waste of time. I mean, they knew exactly who I was and what I was there for, and uh, they had the letter and they had the instructions. Christie was charged with terrorism and banditry. He was found guilty and sentenced to 20 years in jail, but was released in September 1967. Back home in the UK, he continued his life in radical politics. But now, how does he feel about his involvement in the failed attempt to kill General Franco? Well, I'm still an anarchist and I can't see me ever changing. It's, uh, I mean, that time in, in prison uh, consolidated, helped me consolidate those ideas and strengthen those ideas. You know, my, my grandmother said to me, you can't go through life as a spectator, you have to be responsible for your actions. And... Uh, but that sense of responsibility was, was it drove me to become involved in the in the anti Franco's resistance. I would I had no I felt I had no alternative. General Franco eventually died of natural causes in november nineteen seventy five. Stuart Christie now lives in the south of England, where he runs his own printing business. That edition of Witness was written and presented by Mike Lanshin. And for details of our complete range of downloads and our terms of use, go to bbcworldservice.com slash podcasts.